Hello, in this video I'd like to talk about renting versus buying an instrument as well as what is available for shops where you can purchase an instrument and also some shoulder rest options for you. If you already have an instrument that works for you, you can go ahead and skip this video and I'll see you in the next one. Um, but otherwise, let me talk about renting and buying and purchasing an instrument. So renting versus buying. Some shops will offer a rental option that will allow you to make basically payments towards purchasing an instrument at the end. Um, they call it rent to own or something along those lines. Um, the perks of that are you can obviously spread out your payments if things are a little bit financially tight for you and still get a quality student instrument. And also normally included with that is if anything were to happen to the instrument, a string broke, um, the bridge fell off, um, any sort of damage, honestly, they'll cover pretty much anything as part of your rental program. Um, buying the instrument, you still get the great customer service of the shop that you are buying from, but you also just own the instrument and it's yours. Obviously, there's a bigger upfront cost, but the instrument is yours. Um, with any of those options, and also whether you're buying online or whether you're buying um, from a local store, typically it all comes together as one kit. So you'll get your instrument, the bow, a case, a cleaning rag, rosin. Sometimes a shoulder rest is included, but that's sometimes not um, something that you get to choose. It's just a standard one they give you. So if you wanted something different, you might either have to ask or purchase a different one. So shops that you can go to, different places have different local stores. So I would just see what's available in your area. Near me, I have um, Quinlan and Fabish and Pages Music and they're both really great companies. Um, so I know that they are, I think they're around the, co the country in a certain, at least in the Midwest. So I would look them up if you happen to be in the Midwest or something along those lines. So online stores that are really great is charmusic.com and Southwest Strings. Those shops are have local stores, but they will send you instruments um, through the mail, which sounds crazy, I know, but it's possible and it's a really awesome option because those are some fantastic stores as well. And then you can go online, see what they have available. You can even, if you wanted to, um, have a couple shipped to you. I don't know what that cost would be, so you might want to look into that, but I know you can have some things shipped to you, try a few out, and then send them back. Send back the ones that didn't work for you. Okay, now I'd like to talk about Amazon. We all know that Amazon has been a big push of these cheaper instruments, which have made it really affordable for people to start learning the violin. Um, but they've also received a lot of backlash because their instruments aren't always of the best quality. So here's my take on Amazon instruments. There are some pretty awful ones. And when I say awful, I mean they basically don't play. I used to teach in the public school system and I had somebody um, renting an instrument from the school. It looked beat up, but it was decent. It was doing her a good job. Um, and her parents wanted to surprise her with a new violin for Christmas and they ordered one off Amazon and it was not playable. It looked beautiful, it was shiny, it was new. In comparison to the other one, it looked like the better option, but she couldn't make a good sound on it. It wouldn't play, it wouldn't stay in tune, it was very poorly made. Um, and she was very discouraged and her parents were frustrated that they even bought that for her. Um, so. There are some really bad options. There are also some really decent ones. I will say that if you buy like I think $200 or more, um, you're probably safe, but anything cheaper, you're just gonna be frustrated. If you are looking at something on Amazon and want my opinion, I'd be more than willing to give you and my honest opinion on that, um, but that's kind of where I stand on that. Um, I will also say another downside to Amazon is that you don't get the luxury of a store and the customer service to back it up. So if something happens to the instrument, there's no place to go that you, where you bought it to get some help on that. You can take it to a local store, um, but since it's not their instrument, they may not be able to do as much or may not be willing to do as much. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're making a decision. 
The last thing I'd like to talk about is shoulder rests. There are some really great options. Um, some people prefer to use a sponge. Some people prefer to use an actual shoulder rest. And there are some of us who prefer not to play with the shoulder rest. It kind of just depends on our anatomy, how broad or skinny or narrow your shoulders are, how long your neck is, all of these things, your jawline. And in the foundations module, I will be going over setup and how to hold the instrument and position it to yourself. But right now, I just wanna list a few of my favorite shoulder rests for beginners. So like I mentioned, a sponge is a great option um, and that you just attach it to the instrument with rubber bands. Um, the Kuhn shoulder rest, K-U-N, is also great, as well as the Everest one. Um, if you wanted to splurge a bit, I personally use the Bon Musica, but that is a higher price point. I think it was around $60. But I will list my favorite beginner shoulder rests below this video, as well as the shops that I mentioned. And I will see you in the next video.